गुड मॉर्निंग ताओ ओवर फ्लोज कृष्णमूर्ति एंड अर्ली लाइफ सर्टनली जिडू कृष्णमूर्ति इज एन लाइटमेंट बट समथिंग इज मिसिंग इन इज एन लाइटमेंट इट इज लाइक वेन यू अराइव आफ्टर अ लॉन्ग जर्नी एट एन एयरपोर्ट एंड यू रियलाइज दैट यू हैव अराइव बट सडनली यू फाइंड योर लगेज हैज नॉट अराइव with krishna murti it is the other way around something more serious has happened luggage has arrived but he is missing i find it is complex and strange yet not unusual it has happened many times before but for different reasons the reason with krishna murti is absolutely novel but the real situation is not there have been people who were enlightened but they remained within the narrow boundaries of organized religions christians hindus jains buddhists and muslims this is strange and unacceptable to me to me it is unbelievable once you are enlightened you are finished with all conditionings of the mind all your religious conditionings belief system and religions are finished enlightenment is dissolution in the existence then how can your finiteness is still exist enlightenment is being existential being oceanic being godly all narrow boundaries must dissolve jidu krishna murti presented a unique version of indian philosophy and mysticism in a charismatic even mesmerizing style of lecturing that attracted large large audience around the world Although Krishna Murthy taught a philosophy that seems very good throughout his life he was subject to profound spiritual purgation this purgation came to be called the process and suggested to those who witnessed it that his higher self departed transcended from the body and entered into what appeared to be a transcendental state of consciousness transcendental state of consciousness this is known as process this state was accompanied at times by severe pain in his head and back the suffering accompanying this experience occurred only under certain circumstances however it did not impede his teaching work in fact it was understood to contribute to the exalted state in which krishna murti knew the oneness with life and unconditioned freedom that he tried and that he lived throughout his continual lecturing and the books tape recordings and video tapes published by the organization to convey to thousands of persons under his influence krishna murti was born on may 11th 1895 however there is a conflict about his date of birth mary lutian who is the biographer mentions may 11 1895 there are other records also he was an indian philosopher a speaker writer 
and a spiritual figure. He was adopted by the members of the theosophical tradition as a child and was raised to fill the advanced role of the world teacher. But in adulthood, he rejected the, this mantle and distanced himself from the related religious movement. He spent the rest of his life speaking to group and individuals around the world. Many of these talks have been published. He also wrote many books, among them the important are First and the Last Freedom, 1954, and Commentaries on Living, 1956 to 1960. His last public talk was in January 18, January 1986, a month before his death at his home in Ozai in California. Krishnamurti asserted that truth is a pathless land and advised against following any doctrine, discipline, teacher, guru or authority. Including himself, he emphasized topics such as choiceless awareness, psychological inquiry and freedom from religions, spiritual and cultural conditionings. He spoke on these topics throughout his life. His supporters working through a non-profit organization and foundations in India, Britain and United States oversees several independent schools based on his views on education and continue to distribute his thousands of talks, groups and individual discussions and writings in a variety of media formats and languages. The date of birth of Krishnamurti is a matter of dispute. As I said, Mary Lutyens determines it to be May 11, 1895, but Christian Williams notes the unability, unavailability or unreliability of birth registrations in that period and that the statements claiming dates ranging from May 4, 1895 to May 25, 1896 exist. Varying dates is not important. Yet still, when you are talking about the early life, it becomes relevant to mention. She used calculations, Mary Lutyens used calculations based on published horoscope to drive a date, a date of May 11, 1895, but retains a measure of skepticism about it. He was born in a small town, Madan Palais in Madras Presidency which is now modern-day Chittor district in Andhra Pradesh in India. He was born in a Telugu-speaking Brahman family. His father, Jidu Naranana, was employed as an employee, as an official of British colonial administration. Krishnamurti was very fond of his mother, Sanjeevama, who died when Jiddu was only 10 years of age. His parents had a total of 11 children 
of whom six survived childhood. Early life, he went through hardships, financial and otherwise. Normal beatings by the father and all these things created a revolt in his life which he could not exhibit as a teen as a child but later on when opportunity came and exploded in resentment in 1903 the family settled in a place gudapa where krishnamurti has contracted malaria during a previous stay he suffered recurrent bouts of the disease over many years he was a sensitive and sickly child very weak and dreaming quite often he was taken to be intellectually disabled and was beaten regularly at school by his teachers and at home by his father early hardships left a scar on his mind that remained until later on. It is mentioned in his memoirs when he was 18 years old Krishnamurti had psychic experiences such as seeing his sister who had passed away in 1904 and his later and his late mother. Even from his childhood he felt a bond with nature that was to stay with him for the rest of his life. Writing in his journal Krishnamurti states, he always had his strange lack of distance between himself and the trees, rivers, mountains. It was not cultivated. His father retired at the end of 1907. He sought employment at the headquarters of the Theosophical Society at Adair in Tamil Nadu. Narayan had been a Theosophist since 1882. He was eventually hired by the society as a clerk and therefore he moved to that place with his family in January 1909. Narayana and his sons were at first assigned to live in a small cottage that was located just outside the society's compound. Krishnamurti was a vegetarian from birth as he belonged to a Brahmin caste and his family were strict vegetarians. He was an opponent of meat eating based on ethical and spiritual reasons. Thus continues the journey through the early life of Krishnamurti enough for now.